Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. Have a fantastic song for you today. We learn how to do David Gilmore's On an Island. This is just a beautiful song. Got two really amazing guitar solos in it as well that are on electric guitar, so I'm gonna cover those um, as well in this video. I'll switch to electric for that. Uh, but first, I'm kind of gonna work you through all the chords of the song on acoustic, so it's kind of more dominated by acoustic than anything. All right, but before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell so you know when I release a new video. And please, check out my Guitar Academy. You'll see the link in the description uh, below. Um, that link actually will get you uh, a seven-day free trial to my Academy, which contains all my guitar courses covering everything from uh, complete beginner courses to more advanced studies in, in um, you know, improvisation and technique, ear training, theory, uh, a lot of different styles. So please... Uh, Get your free trial and go check it out. All right, so let's jump into this. I'm in standard tuning here, and we have this opening intro, which has kind of an interesting way of playing a G minor chord. It starts, I'm sorry, G minor, E minor chord. It's got a G in the bass here. So it's a first inversion. You'd usually probably play it like this. And there might be even a guitar on the recording that's doing that, but Gilmore, typically when he plays it live, he plays it like this. So that's the intro there. So what I'm doing here is I have the open E string at first. Well, let's just say this is the chord. So it's a kind of a big E power chord is what it is. So to do that, I have the open E string. Then you're going to bar the 2nd fret on the A and the D string. Then you're going to play the 4th fret on the B string. It's a B note, I'm sorry. The 4th fret on the G string. I'll get it together in a second. Alright, and then the open B and the open high E. So it's a nice sound to it. So that chord, what you're going to do here is we have this little bass line that goes in there. There's this one. So what he does, you play, hold that chord, and first you're now going to have your second finger at the third fret on the low E string. So you have the third and the bass there. And then lift up that finger. And then back. So three, zero. That's what's going on there. So we got that little intro where it just does that little figure for uh, a couple times. And then we have the actual verse of the song, which starts with that. Alright, so that starts with that E chord with the G in the bass there, so it's an E minor. And then the open E version of that and then you're going to switch to an A minor chord so that's really the second chord in the verse so that A minor standard A minor chord and then what we're going to do is a C major seventh chord with G in the bass so what in the world is that so we have a C major chord here right first if we want to make it a C major seventh all you gotta do is pick up your index finger you have that open B string in there. So keep that there. Now to put the fifth in the bass, you're going to take your uh, ring finger here, move it over to the third fret of the low E string, and then 
put your pinky back where that your finger was before, yeah, where mm -hmm. your ring finger was before on the third fret of the A. So, so far we have this. Now this goes to a B minor chord. If you don't know what that is, the bar at the second fret and from the fifth string across to the high E string. And then you're also going to have a um, the fourth fret on the D and the G, third fret on the B. So that's one time through the, it's like kind of the first ending of the uh, verse. So we have this. Remember that night, white steps in the moonlight. All right, then repeat. They walked here too. So that second ending, you start with that B minor that we did before, and then you turn it into a, a B7 chord, B dominant 7, and I'm putting the fifth in the bass there too. So bar across the full, all six strings on the, on the um, second fret, and then add the fourth fret on the D and the B. So that's the second time through. So both parts together now, we have this. So that's the verse. So we just kind of repeated that progression twice and with a different ending. Uh, well, we'll say that that whole progression, one with a B minor and then that B7 ending, and then you repeat all of it again one more time. All right, and then we get to, I guess we can call this the pre chorus. I don't know, it's not one of those verse chorus, verse chorus songs, um, but it sounds like this. We lay side by side between the moon. So that's going to start here up at the uh, seventh fret here. So I know this, this I don't, I didn't put any uh, fret markers on this. this. This guitar has no fret markers. I like the, the way it looks. So I just kind of kept it this way. So this is the only part of the song that we move up uh, away from like kind of open position. So um, anyway, seventh fret. That should be easy enough, right? I'm telling you where to go. So seventh fret. Do a bar at the seventh fret. We're going to play an E minor chord. <laughs> So that's just borrowing at the seventh fret uh, across the top five strings, open low E, and then you're gonna play the ninth on the D and the G, eighth on the B. Then staying on the same fret, you're gonna borrow across all six strings now. You're gonna play a B minor chord, and then we're gonna play the ninth fret on the A and the D. So we have this. Now I'll do the exact same thing, except don't hit that low E string in the bass here. Just, just strum these five strings here. I'll get the fifth fret, and then to that minor chord off the sixth string. So it's the same move. Same thing, two frets lower. And the same thing, two more frets lower. Mapping the stars for a while. And then we 
have this section which really is just played on guitar with just like just a low G note. That kind of thing. But to make it sound a little bit more interesting, since he has like organ and all that stuff with him, I'm going to try to recreate those chords so you can make it sound, just if you just had an acoustic guitar or one guitar string, you can make it sound closer. So it kind of sounds like this. Let the night surround you Halfway to the stars Ebb and flow Let it go Feel the warmth beside you To the solo there. So this basically is like a G Lydian progression. It just kind of holds G Lydian. And the triads they do on top does an A major on top, which pretty makes it a, a, a Lydian chord. So that's all I'm doing. I'm holding this G. So at first I'm just kind of strumming the low E string with the third fret there, muting the A string, and then strumming the D, open D, G, and the B there for that first chord. So it's kind of like a G power chord. And then what I do is I just bar up the second fret here on the uh, D, G, and the B. And then back down. So we have this. Let the night surround you. Again. Halfway to the star. Ebb and flow. So this third time, you do that A over it, and then you change it to a... Just a regular G major 7 chord. Then back to the um, A with the G in the bass. So, and then back to the. Um, Feel the beside you. So, we're not going to see this as. Feel this as an A dominant 7 chord because even though these are the notes of it, he's establishing G as the, as the root, the tonic there. So because of that, everything on top of that has to be related to because of uh, to this G. So um, that's going to make it a G, kind of a little modal progression real quick. Just that G, when you put that A over it, it becomes like a G Lydian chord. And so a quick little static Lydian progression. And then when it goes to G major 7, that's fine for Lydian. So it's a really cool sound. Let the night surround you. We're halfway to the stars Ebb and flow Let it go Feel the warmth beside you Then we get to the uh, first solo so the rhythms for the, the, the chords underneath that first solo are this.
right, so we have um, uh, this E minor 9 chord there. So we have this open E string, 2nd fret on the A, 2nd fret on the D, open G, 3rd fret on the B, 2nd fret on the high E. Really nice chord. Now when he first plays it, he doesn't really strum it, that kind of first time through it's kind of just like... Then it goes to that same, remember we did that C major 7 with a G and a bass? It's pretty much the same chord, except we're not going to have a C major 7. It's a regular C major with G and the bass. So make sure that finger is at the first fret there on the B string. Everything else is the same. So instead of this, put that first finger back down on the first fret of the B. Then back to the E minor 9. And then the last chord is an F major 7. Um, and probably how he's doing this is the kind of playing that F with his uh, thumb there on the low E string. Then the fifth fret, I'm sorry, the third fret on the A and the D. Third fret, I'm sorry, second fret on the G, first fret on the B. And then the, what makes it an E major seven? I mean, a, a major seventh chord, an F uh, major seven chord is adding that E open E in there. So that E string is open. So those are the four chords. He repeats it like four times. So the fourth time through though, when he gets to that F major seven, he quickly then shifts up to regular to a G major chord. And then we end that the the solo the rhythm for the solo section with that that same descending thing we had in the pre chord. Of course, there's no singing there; it's just the solo. Then we're back to the verse. Now, the verse when you come back through after that first solo, it's the same chords, but it moves the. There's a little bit more uh, root movement going on, so I. that little basically it's the same exact thing we just had that at the beginning of it so that three two on the low e and then when you come back down to the three it's it's the four so after that there's just a little variation that does it just kind of makes the the song move a little bit more through as the song goes and then we have the same pre-chorus and then that same kind of G Lydian thing. Um, and then we have the, uh, well, the outro solo, the second solo. Now the second solo is just over the verse. So the thing that we've been doing for the verse. We can do that little movement there too. So it's just over the verse chords. Now, Obviously, he, live in on the recording, there's some um, kind of like some electric guitar parts that are kind of uh, overdubbing it, but it's really driven by the acoustic. So you can play the same stuff here on electric to sound, make it sound like the album too. So if you have both, that'd be great. But we just so just even the electric guitar parts are really using these same chords. So there's really nothing different, just different type of, type of guitar. All right, so now let's take a look at both of these solos. I'm going to play through the first solo for you here, and then we'll take a look at it note for note.
right, so just another epic Gilmore solo. We got another one coming in the song, so it's just some great stuff in the song. All right, so the first phrase of this solo is going to be this right here. Uh, we have this. So that's going to be um, pulling off from 10 to 7 on the B. And we're back on to 10. Over to 7 on the high E now. And then a bend at the 10th fret on the B. Let's wear this. All right, from there we have this. So we have, uh, that's a pull off again from 10 to 7 on the B. Over to 9 on the G. And then slide into that 7th fret on the G and pick it a couple times. And then what you're going to do is slide into the 9 on the D string. And then slowly kind of slide it back down. All right, so so far we have this. All right, from there we have this. So that's a really kind of lightly muted. That's playing the third fret on the low E, and then two on the A and the D, and then a five on the D. So it's heavily muted actually, but just lightly hit. And then we have kind of a half step bend and release at the fourth fret on the D into an F power chord. So that comes with. And we have this. So that's uh, so. So coming out of. It's a bend, kind of half step bend and release at the second fret on the G. Or a whole step bend and release. Pull off. So bend and release, pull off to the open string. And then back to the two. And then, you know, slide into four on the uh, G string over to three on the B. And then just grab a D major. He likes to play it like this a little bit and they're live. So you just do it with a regular D major. Then he jumps up here and grabs this uh, C major chord. What ends up being a full C major. You just play the, the five, fifth fret on the D and the G at first. And then when he hits it again, you start hearing the G and the B string in there at the, across the fifth fret. Making it a full C major. And then we have this. So that's sliding into the seventh fret on the B to eight, and then a bend of the set of the tenth fret on the B. Then over to the high E string, gonna pull off ten to seven. Back to 10, into a bend there. And then we're up here at the 15th fret. We're going to do this little phrase. And right here, there's kind of an overdub comes in here. So it's, so it's kind of like really two separate solos that kind of put together in the studio. So, but here the ending of the first one is, we're just pulling off 15 to 14 on the uh, uh, high E, and then back to 15. And then 
13th fret on the high. And then, quick little 13 on the B over to 14 on the G. All right, and then that next guitar comes in. Okay, so, so that's just kind of the two on the D, open G, and then pull off two to uh, zero on the G, and then into that bend, the second fret there. Hold it. You get, now, how Gilmore does vibrato on notes, whenever he's bending a note, he uses the vibrato bar to, to do it. This one's kind of tight, so it doesn't really, I don't really have it set up for that kind of thing. And then again, release, pull off just the open, and back to the two. And again, and then resolve it down to the second part of the D. So you just kind of have to just mess around with those three notes doing that bend. So right there, that little ending, I just, it's kind of weird. You hear a D, and then sliding into a D. So you might want to hit the open D, then slide into the D at the fifth fret on the A string, and then, and that's a kind of quick little bend and release at the fifth fret on the low E string. Pull off the three, and the open E. So kind of like that. And then jump up here and grab this D here at the seventh fret. So instead of the the fifth fret there, the the uh, bar there the, for the C chord is up at the seventh of the D. So we have that little figure that happens. So that's the tenth fret on the B and the high E together, and you're going to be bending up the tenth fret there on the B. So it's, a, it's an oblique bend, so you keep that note steady on the high E string. So you bend it twice, then release, and then down to that eighth fret there on the B. Again. Then we have this. So it's really cool. We have this. So you're kind of doing a, the 10th um, fret and then bend it up a whole step. Then a step and a half and then back to a regular, just a whole step. And then end it with a hammer, a hammer from eight to 10, pull back off to eight. So we have this. So that first time you play that 10, he kind of slowly starts bending it up. So you hear that? So he starts to bend a little bit and then whole step and then step and a half, whole step. It's David Gilmore, man. It's hard to do. So, and then we have this. So that basically just 12th fret on the B to the 15th. So sorry, and then that bend that 15th. And then we gotta pick it again. And then kind of release the bend, raise it back up, release it, and pull off to the 12th fret. So this. Like that. And then we have this. So that little move right there was after that second bend of the 15, we go to the 12th fret on the high E, pull off 15 to 12 on the high E, then back to that bend on the B string. So we have this. And 
And then back to that 12th fret on the high E, pull off, 15, 12. And then a bend at the 15th fret on the high E string instead of the B string. And then 17, and then back down to 15 here. So we have this. All right, and then we have this. So that's a bend at the 15th fret. And then you release that bend, pull off to 12, and then pull off 14 to 12 on the G. And we just climb this melody. So that's 14 on the high E, and then 15, and then 17, bend, and then slightly release, and then back. And we have this little ending for the first solo. All right, so that's a lot of half set bends, which are generally, you know, harder harder to get in tune than whole step bends. So we have this. Uh, so it's a whole half step at the 14th fret there on the uh, high E string. Release and pick it again. Then come down to the 12th fret. We have this. So that's a half step bend and release. Pull off to the 10 and then play 12 again. Then down to the 10th fret, kind of the same thing, half step bend, release, pull off to eight, and then go over to the 11th fret on the B, and then end the solo with a bend of the eighth fret on the uh, B string. Try this. So that's it for the first solo. Now let's take a look at the second solo. You might want to take a break. So kind of there, it starts to fade out there. So just just another epic solo out of the hands of David Gilmour. I mean, I could just play this thing all day. Uh, so we have this first phrase here. It looks, looks like this. So we have this. So this ninth fret on the G, eight on the B, ten on the B, and here's where he starts uh, kind of torturing your fingers towards some really beautiful bends. So the tenth fret bend again, whole set, release, 
of these. Then the whole step, then again, up to a step and a half, and then back down. So we have this. All right, and then from here we have this kind of back slide back into that 10th fret. And then up, so like slight bend up to the whole step. And then down to the 8th fret there. And then. So that's a half step bend. You can play it like that if you want. Half step bend and release of the 7th fret on the B. And then play 7 on the G. And then overdo 7 on the D. Hit that 7 a couple times on the D. And then. So that's sliding into the 9th uh, fret on the D. 7 on the G. And then slide into the 9 on the uh, G. So we have this uh, all together. Uh, from there we have this. So that's kind of sliding into the 12 on the G over to the 12 on the B, the 15 on the B, and then some bends and release. Bring it back. I'm sorry. Let's play this. And then we'll figure out the, after the end of that little melody. So that little pull off is pulling off from 15 to 12 on the B, over to 14 on the G, and then a back to the 15 on the B and a little slight bend. And then we have 12 on the B, slide down 11, and then back to 12. So we're... Then this. So we have this uh, kind of a rake across the top three strings of the 12th fret. So rake across that little E minor triad. So that's up there, then 14 on high E, half step bend, release, then back to that bend. Then over to the B string, and then over to that. A half step bend at the 12th fret on the B string. And then pick that bend when you, get, when you get to the top of the bend. And then here we have this. So it's more half step bend releases of the 14 on the high E. Pull off to 12, back to that 14. Then another bend and release. Then over to the 15 on the B. And 14 twice on the G. Then 12, 15 on the B to the 12 on the high E string. Then. Great moments when he does his, his, his Remember, he's over the verse here, so whenever they hit that B7 uh, chord, some really cool parts there. Um, so, anyway, so you're here with. So, that's at the um, eighth fret there on the B. Over to nine on the uh, G. And then the um, kind of the tenth fret. So, so, eight, slight bend, nine on G, and then 10 from the B, and then a bend, 
release, pull off to uh, the eighth fret in play, nine seven on G. And then we have this. And that's gonna be sliding from nine to seven on the D. Then play five, back to seven, and pick it again, slide back to the nine, over to seven on the G, back to that nine, and then when you pick the seven again, bend it up a half step. So I have this. All right, from there we have this. So that's kind of a kind of a just sliding quickly nine to seven on the D string to five on the D. And then back to those bends at the 10th fret, a whole step, release, down to eight, and then the seven half. Then just the whole step. Release. Down to ten. I'm sorry, down to eight. And then we play, play this which is seven on the B, bend at the eighth fret there, whole side bend, and then seven. So we have this. And then we have this. Which is just that three, two, three, low E and then slide into five. Then we have this. So that's kind of this. So. so you just kind of move it up. So slide into the seven on the low E. Then the A, and there's five on the uh, A, and then play five, seven on the D, slide into the nine, over to uh, seven on the G, then slide into the nine on the G, eight, kind of a bend and release there on the 10, pull off to eight, and back to that bend. And remember that slight release and back up. And then we're towards the end of the solo. We have this kind of do that. Let's just hit, pull off 12 to 10 on the high E string and back to the 12. Let that ring. And then we have this. So that's just. A little rake at the 12 again. So it kind of so into the 14, half step, bend and release, down to 12, and 12 on the beat. And then and that's a whole step, bend and release at the 12 on the beat. I'm going to start the high, C, high E string. Release to 10. On the then you play ten on the B, then just eight, then it releases the ten on the B, pull off the ten, pull off the eight, and then uh, over to nine on the G, and then it kind of fades out, it just kind of messes around. Uh, but that's about it. That's about, that's enough notes for me. But it's just a, it's another epic series of solos by David Gilmore. Beautiful song. Just really cool all the way around. So I hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth breakdown of On an Island. Um, I certainly enjoyed uh, transcribing it and playing through it for a while and, uh, to figure it out. So it was really cool. All right. So I hope to see you guys again soon for GuitarLessons365.com. Bye-bye.